back to the Weekly What's Up. I'm Tori Nagel. And I'm Olivia Bracia. And this is your Weird National News. Authorities have been hunting down a man who stole 140,000 pounds of walnuts. According to ABC News, the theft occurred last Sunday from a walnut facility in the town of Escalon. Experts say the walnut industry in California has been suffering from theft a lot recently. Just last month, 12,000 pounds of walnuts were stolen from a facility in Sacramento. Hopefully the authorities will crack this nutty case soon. It was me. I love walnuts so much. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll turn you in. <laughs> Recently, two men were elected into city council, despite the fact that they were both convicted lawbreakers. According to Huffington Post, in Flint, Michigan, one of the elected was actually put away to prison for murdering. The newly elected man and convicted murderer, what Want Was Davis, spent 19 years in prison for second-degree murder of a Kenneth S. Morris. Surprisingly, there is, a lot of, there is not a law in Michigan that prevents a convicted murderer from being elected. Now that Davis is an official, he says with his position he will try to improve treatment of ex-felons as a way to resolve the crime in our community. That's nice. He changed his life around. How do people trust him, though, after, like, he murdered somebody? Mm, I know, but you should Very try Very shocking. People. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if they, like, psych profile. I, I should have more faith okay in people. Yeah. yeah, you should try that. <laughs> When Jessica Epper was robbed from her car at gunpoint in Orlando, Florida, the last thing she was expecting was to be given a pair of pink box cutters as a parting gift. Epper was programming her GPS when a white woman and black male approached her car and asked her to exit the vehicle while holding her at gunpoint. The two robbers got into her Honda Civic, rolled down the windows, and then chucked the pair of pink box cutters at her, saying, here you go, take these and take care of yourself. Suspects are likely to be in their 20s and 30s and have yet to be found. <laughs> How about a box cutter help her get out of anything? What more do you need in light? Here. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and they're pink? Come on. <laughs> in other news, a Christian group was reported on airdropping Bibles into North Korea. According to Huffington Post, the group is based in Colorado and has already airdropped about 50,000 Bibles. The leader of the mission group responsible, Pastor Eric Foley, said that North Korean citizens are forced to follow a state ideology where they are the most persecuted believers on earth. Apparently, North Korea has a history of pu publicly executing and arresting citizens for distributing the Bible and affiliating themselves otherwise. Foley felt it was his duty pro to provide the nation with Bibles to prevent further executions. That just sounds so funny to me. Like, you're just, like, walking down the street and just get, like, impaled by a bunch of Bibles. Bibles. <laughs> the power of Christ compels Christianity. you. Christianity! <laughs> Believe it! In Trinity, Florida, a man has been charged with impersonating a cop for one reason. He wanted discounted donuts. According to WTSP, 48-year-old Charles Berry went to Dunkin' Donuts drive through last week claiming to be a marshal and then asked for a discount on his order. After being shown a fake ID, the drive through worker denied Berry a discount. Berry got angry and said, see, I'm a cop, then left. Berry returned to that drive through many times until the police set up surveillance and caught Berry with a fake police ID and gun in his vehicle. Things people do for donuts. You'd be surprised what people try to get away with. Like at 7 Eleven, like I feel like sometimes people come in wearing like a costume, like a post office costume or something, because they get free coffee. And they'll try to get free coffee by wearing the costume. But it's like clearly they're not an employee of the state, like at all. Yeah. <laughs> in other news, a 75 year old British woman was convicted for emptying a bag of dog poo on a cyclist that she felt was riding too close to her. According to UPI.com, Susan Corral swung the bag at fellow cyclist. Michael Ramage while she was walking along the path. Unexpectedly, the bag split open and the contents spilled all over Ramage. Corral was ordered to pay $200 for court costs and dry cleaning costs. The incident will go on her record. Jeez. <laughs> Poor woman. She goes like all this time and then on her record. For that. Poo People at are like, you apply for a job or something and they're like, I see you through poo at someone. They can't hire you now. <laughs> In other news, in a Miami parking lot, dozens of cars were left stranded downtown after agitated valet workers dumped the keys. According to the NBC New York, owners of the cars discovered a pile of keys once they got off their cruise. There was a large uproar as people scrambled through to try to find their own. Some people feared that they would miss their flight, whereas others threatened to call the police. Reports do not explain what made the valet workers disgruntled enough to do this. However, reports do explain people who could not find their keys had to take several drastic measures to move their cars most of which had to come back days following getting off their cruise. Man, you come from this court cruise and you're all relaxed and then... Welcome back! You can't find your keys. <laughs> Story of their life. <laughs> yeah. Wisconsin man Benjamin Duddles, age 41, called 911 early Wednesday morning to ask the authorities to remove a snoring woman from, her, from his bed. Duddles claimed that he had no idea how she even got into his apartment. According to the smoking gun, when the police arrived, Duddles admitted that the woman had gotten drunk that him and the woman had gotten drunk together the earlier that night, hooked up, and that's why she was in his bed. 
After hearing Duddle's story, the police said that his, this was his personal matter and left Duddles to deal with the woman himself. Jeez. I wonder what else went on to make him forget. <laughs> I guess it's like one of the most drastic things a guy would do to get a woman out of his apartment. <laughs> Call the police. After the morning after. <laughs> That's all for our weird national news, but stay tuned because when we come back, we have Susanna and Jacob with weird science news. Welcome back to the weekly What's Up. I'm Jacob Clore. And I'm Susanna Shepard. And, and this is, is your Weird, weird Science, Science News. A Las Vegas man showed just how far some people would go to earn some extra cash. Mark Parisi sold one of his testicles for $35,000 and had it replaced with a fake one. All for a scientific study. Parisi said, what you do is you go in and you donate one of your testicles. They replace it with an artificial one and when you get check out after 14 days, you get a check for $35,000. Parisi also gets free checkups, which saves him $700. This is not the only scientific study Parisi has taken place in. He estimated that he has saved more than $150,000 in other studies, including an Ebola virus study that paid $5,000 per week. Parisi stated that he wanted to participate in a nuttier study, where researchers stopped participants' hearts for a full minute. Unfortunately, the Food and Drug Administration nixed, nixed the study. When he's not selling his balls, Parisi markets for an upscale coffee shop and bakery. Participating keeps him from using his salary as spending money. That sounds like an easy way to make money. Yeah, I just don't think I want to get rid of my jewels. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I were a guy, I don't think I could go through it either. Yeah, it's like you getting rid of something close to your heart too, so. I could only imagine. <laughs> Have you ever caught yourself wondering how life actually started on this planet? I mean, it's a question that I think a lot of us ask. Definitely. Well, Dr. Sankar Chatterjee at Texas Tech University claims he has found the answer to this monu monumental question. It's known that in ancient times, Earth was struck multiple times by asteroids, which may have brought water and organic molecules to our planet. Chatterjee has pondered this, further hypothesizing that the crater's impact impacts formed a sort of crucible in which chemical reactions between the molecules of water and organic matter gave rise to living cells, thus creating life. His chain of events for this to happen goes as follows. First, meteorites punched craters into Earth. Second, icy comets that collided with Earth melted, filling the craters with water. Lastly, more meteorites struck Earth that created volcanically driven geothermal vents in the Earth's crust and heated and stirred the water. Chatterjee's conclusion has not convinced all scientists that he has found the scientific holy grail. Much more research will have to be done to confirm his findings. Wow, that's quite the hypothesis he has there. It's a pretty far-fetched guess, if you tell yeah, me. I'm still sticking with my beliefs. <laughs> Sorry, Chatterjee, you have not convinced me. Well, a Dutch bioengineer has said his lab may have produced a solution to world hunger in the form of a fungus. Hans van Leeuwen, a professor at Iowa State University, says the fungus has a unique flavor that might turn off some people. The fungus is cultivated from the leftovers of ethanol production. He grows the batch over a 48 hour period and dries it out in a washing machine and microwave. When it is all dried up, the fungus has a meaty texture and a brown to mustard yellow color. The fungus is popular in Asian cuisine, and the pigs that were fed the fungus in feeding the trials liked it too. Lewin hopes that the fungus can be put in the form of a capsule as a diet additive, or used to solve world hunger for hundreds of millions of people. Lewin already has his process patented. He just needs some investors to help fund his research. He hopes with some extra funds, he can make the fungus taste better. You with, could, you couldn't yeah. pay me to eat that. With that There's... kind of description, like a brownish mustard color? I would gag before I put that in my mouth. I like mustard, but fungus mustard. I'm already, I'm already like afraid of wild mushrooms, oh. so I just <laughs> can't have that in my mouth. It would not work out. Understandable. 
A prehistoric creature named Archaeopteryx has long been what is believed to be the key transition from dinosaurs to birds. It was the first feathered dinosaur to be discovered. When it was found, it would be crazy to suggest that it was actually losing its ability to fly. Recently, however, older species of feathered dinosaurs with anatomies better tailored for flight have been found. Archaeopteryx may have actually been evolving to lose its ability of flight, states Michael Habib, a biologist at the University of Southern California. Evidence to support this claim includes findings that Archaeopteryx lived in an archipelago during the Jurassic era. Its anatomy also is very similar to modern flightless birds that frequently dwell on islands. This could completely change what we believe to be the evolution of birds. Well, what I, what I thought of immediately when you started reading that story was Ducky from The Land Before Time. Yes, I love uh, Ducky. Little bird she, dinosaurs. But she can't fly. Maybe she was an archaeopteryx. Maybe. We'll never know. <laughs> well, a rogue Roomba has made robot history by committing bot suicide. The robot from an apartment in Kirchdorf, Austria, was so fed up with its task of picking up cereal off the kitchen counter that it turned itself on, rolled on a hot plate, and set itself on fire quite the desperate attempt. Quoted as, somehow it seems to have reacted itself and made its way along the work surface where it pushed a cooking pot out of the way and basically that was the end of it. Fireman Helmut Neiswasser told the Daily Mail, I don't know about the allegations of a rob robot suicide, but the homeowner is insistent that the device was switched off. It's a mystery how it came to be activated and ended up making its way to the hot plate. The fire required the evacuation of the apartment building and caused considerable smoke damage in the apartment, leaving homeowner Gernot Hackel and his family homeless. This is depressing. Yeah, I mean... This Robots don't even have souls, and it was that fed up with its life that it just... It's just, it's done. On the hot plate, burning itself up. And it's such a violent way to, like, die, too. Yeah, really morbid. <sighs> yeah, really. Hmm. Although marijuana is still illegal in Virginia, it is becoming more legal and thus more popular across the nation. Just like anything else, weed has positive and negative effects on the body. THC, the key component in marijuana, is known to cause an immediate spike in testosterone in both men and women, which can cause an acne flare, increased oil production, and hair loss. If it is smoked, the smoke reacts with your skin in a similar way as cigarette smoke does, causing significantly more rapid aging. However, if it is smoked using a vaporizer, you could receive antioxidants from it that are similar to those in red wine that contain anti-aging properties. There are other factors this substance causes, such as increased appetite and an increase in memory loss. Marijuana even has several medicinal benefits, including pain relief, improved sleep, and treatment for glaucoma. It is proven not to be an addictive substance, however. Well, I'm sure Lady Gaga would have a rebuttal to that statement because she recently came out with how she was addicted to marijuana, so. She's the only person I've ever heard to claim marijuana addiction. Mm, I don't know. I mean... Doctors wouldn't be prescribing it in California if they if they were going to get their patients. <laughs> well, those are to be doctors addicted. in California. Hmm. This is and this is Lady Gaga. Who are you going to believe? I don't know. Doctor <laughs> Californians are a little yeah. Woo. Anyway. True. According to the stars of Animal Planet's Finding Bigfoot, the way to Bigfoot's heart may be through its stomach. One of the stars of the show, James Bobo Fay, believes that sweets and bacon may attract the furry creature. Reports from the 1990s stated, since the early 1900s, there has been reports from people saying, I was cooking bacon, and the Bigfoot came in and licked the pan clean when I set it down later. Bigfoot tends to eat raw meat, like deers and berries, but they definitely love a home-cooked meal. The Finding Bigfoot team laid out a tray of chicken wings and bacon, but they didn't work. The berries and apples did, apparently, because Bigfoot will think that they will attract deer. Faye has also been known to put donuts down on the hunt. I don't know about Bigfoots, but that would attract me. Yeah, bacon, donuts, like a free Dunkin' Donuts gift card to campus, I, I would be sold. Bacon and donuts. Call well, they the actually Bigfoot. have a thing called a bacon maple bar, which is like a bacon-soaked donut, so. Have you ever actually watched the show? No, I haven't. I have. It's really it funny. Goofy? It's really funny. Like, yeah. they take it so seriously, but you know, like. It's never going to happen. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways. One of the Earth's rarest mammals, the Sala, has been caught on camera after eluding contact with humans for the past 15 years. 
Salas, which are antelope-like longhorned ox that live in the remote mountains of Laos and Vietnam, weren't discovered until 1992 when a joint team of World Wildlife Fund and Vietnam's Forest Control Agency found a skull with unusual horns. The second occurrence with these animals was in 1993 when two were captured in central Vietnam but died in captivity after a few months. The last sighting was in 1998, making this most recent sighting that just occurred in September important because it showed scientists that they are not yet extinct. It's been 20 years since they were first known to science, and yet hardly anything is known about them. The actual population is unknown, but it could range from a few hundred to a few dozen, making it even harder to learn anything about them. Wow, it's like, it's like one of those TV shows where you like the animals eluding humankind. Mm -hmm. and, I don't know. Those sneaky little rascals. Ugh. Well, that's all we have for Weird Science News, but stay tuned because when we come back, we'll have Corey and Key with Girls vs. Food. Suvlaki's, the place on Main Street to get your authentic Greek cuisine experience. With a variety of dishes to choose from, like a spanakopita or a gyro, this is one of the iconic food locations to visit for both taste and comfort. Also known for being on the Virginia Tech bucket list, Suvlaki's offers an array of drinks you can choose from, both alcoholic and of course, non-alcoholic. You can sit at the bar to see the sports on TV or choose from their many tables to socialize with friends, family, and staff. Everyone at Suvlaki's is friendly and helpful as they're eager to assist anyone with trying Greek cuisine for the first time. You 
guys probably you, you guys have probably seen them. It's like that. It's always very tiny, it's always heated. And they just like take slices off of that. It's so good. Cool. All right, I know you guys enjoyed watching me eat this sandwich, but let's go behind the scenes and see how the sandwich is really made. Once you order a gyro or spanakopita, it's made right on the grill, right behind the counter. As you can see, they're using meat that they've prepared either the day before on the rotisserie, or they usually use fresh meat on the weekdays. They steam the pitas to make sure that they stay warm so that you'll enjoy the maximum quality of their foods. The wait time isn't very long if you once you order at Tsubaki's. It usually takes an average of five to seven minutes for you to get your order once you order it from the counter. If you're on the go, but you still want to enjoy that authentic Greek taste, ask for a gyro to go. They'll wrap it up in aluminum foil for you so that you can eat it while walking down the street. Looks delicious, doesn't it? We have a customer to tell us their opinion. So, how long have you been a customer of Suzaki's? Seven years, and what do you think about their gyros? They're amazing. Uh, I moved to Kentucky, and none of the Greek places have real gyro meat. It's all frozen and stuff, so it's kind of super disappointing. So. Good to be back. Welcome back to the weekly What's Up. I'm Rena Miller. And I'm Macy Kinder. And, and these, these are, are your weird, weird world facts. According to Google Maps, there's a road called Miley Cyrus Lane in India. Okay, so she I guess she really is taking over the world and the fact that the she is naming the world. <laughs> it's like the twerk lane. <laughs> twerk lane! <laughs> Speaking of Google Maps, after getting lost on a train when he was five, Indian Saru Khan found his way back home 26 years later using Google Earth. Okay, I That's don't understand impressive. though. I, like, how did he find his way back if he was lost? lost. Couldn't he have found it originally just yeah. using a map? I don't know. Maybe he just had like a. Oh, I remember how to get home now. I'm gonna. I found out my address. You still need Suddenly. your address. <laughs> Selfie has been named 2013 Word of the Year by Oxford Dictionaries. I can see that every. I think it's every day. I know there's a Selfie, selfie Sunday, Sun. but there's like hashtag Selfie. Selfie Monday, Selfie Tuesday. Oh my gosh, selfie a puppy Wednesday. Selfie. Selfie. There's a beautiful sky outside. Selfie. Selfie. <laughs> <laughs> the record for the longest period without sleep is 11 days. I can't even go like 11 minutes without sleep. I know. I feel like I'm always falling asleep. I'm one of those old people that fall asleep at like nine. Eight, nine, eight, nine, and nine. <laughs> the word for the overuse of exclamation parks is bangoria. Oh, that, hold on. My mom has been <laughs> bangoria. I get texts from her and she'll be like, call me 15 million exclamation points. My heart drops. Like, that's serious. Hey, honey, just wanted to talk. Just wanted to talk. <laughs> In Jurassic Park, the sound of the Velociraptors communicating was actually a recording of mating tortoises. <laughs> okay, I don't understand. Like, they're just like, this sounds pretty cool. Let's We're put this as a dinosaur backdrop. <laughs> Missouri has the worst drivers in the world, and Minnesota has the safest, according to Men's Health. Um, I don't, I don't know. I've apparently, never really been to either. But... Apparently, they've never been to Nova. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible drivers over there. The scientific name for a stomach gurgle is Borgamus. Borgamus. It kind of makes it, if you sound it out, it kind of sounds like You like that. put your head on someone's stomach, just like, did it sound like Borgamus? <laughs> the Big Bang was actually silent. Now, I don't understand that. You just think like it was just like 
But how would you even know that? I guess space is silent, technically. There's no sound in space. Glitter, glitter was invented in New Jersey in 1934. I think it was invented by a man when I was reading about it. A man invented glitter. Why? Did he just want his like woman to like, sparkle or something like that? How would you even go about that? I'm going to cut up this piece of paper like 500 times. And then put it on something. <laughs> well, that's all for, we have for today's show. Join us next time on the Weekly What's Up. I'm Macy Kinder. And I'm Rhianna Miller. Have a good day. I love how you do that whenever you mess up. You're like, huh? It was. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Hold on. Can we start that fun part over again? There's so much awkwardness going on in that moment. Okay. <laughs>